sometimes when I sit back and really let it register I did everything I said I would and said it first <laughs> I mean the world's in denial but they all know what I'm headed for <sighs> We about to feed these youngins to the metaverse Meanwhile I'm over here just trying to pen a verse Cause I'm done being extra with the extroverts The label used to wonder how I'm supposed to stand next to Vert Probably never thought that I would get these legs to work I work hard but hard shit don't need no extra work Exactly, man is that really mental state and the energy to keep living and breathing when it does get slammed. I, you know, I've spent that much, you know, over a million dollars on personal development and I was a huge part of learning this key foundation of getting my morning routine dialed from, you know, from, you know, I've done, I've got the ice bath, you know, but boom. Sorry. Uh, sorry, that's all right. That's okay. And the yeah. pot and took the bland out. I know my grandpa would have a heart attack if I pulled a hundred grand out. So I'm not gonna pull a hundred grand out. Simon, I'm actually excited. Um, uh, I spent a bit of time with you over the past few days. And um, uh, what a journey. What a freaking journey. What a journey. Journey from starting... Culture King 15 years ago from nothing, very small start, yourself and, and wife today. You guys started um, uh, from nothing together as a team. Two years ago, company, no secret, secret, it was sold, or half of the company was sold for $300 million. Yeah. Today I'm sitting in your beautiful place and I was just looking at the shoes that are 130,000 30, US. So that's just a crazy journey, starting from nothing. What a great freaking story. I don't even know where to start this conversation because running my own business is not hard. Not, not easy, should I say, more than anything. But that journey from nothing to, to how far you have come. So my question to you, the first one, do you realize when you and your beautiful wife have done? Yeah, I I definitely have been a huge one on reflecting and weekly plans every week and sort of measuring having big goals and, and making progress towards them. So as much as it seems, um, you know, and, and I'm still always trying to repractice that gratitude every day and, and reflect. It's it. Oh, it's so it's important. Great, yeah. Feet on ground. Because you can't help that natural human tendency to compare no matter what level you get to, oh, I finally could get to that. Oh, I finally could, you know, and you just keep moving the goalposts. But it is the thing that I always try and reflect and practice that gratitude and, and reflect on my own work and performance or what could I have done better? What did I learn? And always vision myself in the better of like, whatever I'm dealing with now, I'm like, I'm going to be 10 times better at in the future. Which is interesting because a lot of people, when they reach that pinnacle, they sell the company, they close everything. Okay, I'm done. I give up. I'm financially stable. I don't have to work. Not in your case. That page, okay, I've achieved that. I want to go forward. I'm going to learn more. I want to get better. And I want to keep having fun by being the best version of myself and enjoying clearly being in business even today. So you didn't want to stop. You yeah. are only 38 years old today. Yeah, no, I definitely, I get so excited every day to work and build and, and grow and learn. And I've always been like, you know, I got from like Tony Robbins and the thing is like, you know, that, ba that happiness is that balance of being challenged yet on top of things, right? And it's like, You've always got to keep raising the challenge and expanding that threshold of control. But you get excited, like there's no oh, tomorrow. Yeah, even discussions over the last few days, you know, you're so committed and excited, and you know, about the journey of whatever you are doing. Yeah, and loving, you know, the the challenge and that solving problems and and making making magic happen. And I, I think it was an important step of, you know, as we grew Culture Kings, it was 
all our eggs in one basket. It's, it is the way of when you grow a business, like, cause we didn't have any funding or investors or anything is we were only growing it. We're only doing one stall per year of what we could afford to do and lay out the fit out. And so we were doubling down and it was this thing of, we had this thing, we had this fire, we lost like $10 million in a day, our warehouse burnt down. We had, you know, that start of COVID and it was always for me as like talking to the right advisors and mentors was like if i could diversify and take some money off the table where it's like it's so big now it's like it's like i'm at the roulette table and i've just been doubling down i've won 300 times in a row but the thing is my entire thing i'm betting every time and it is the thing is you know like you know this when you have that wage bill every week you know six or seven hundred grand like it's still that that pressure of that entrepreneur, it never really releases. And that was that thing is I did feel though in doing that deal was this part of like, okay, we've taken this money off the table, the rest, you know, like let it ride, yes. you know, and we can, and, and that it's, if it goes to the moon or goes, you know, but if it doesn't, it's still safe. It, it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. So it, it's that. And I think for an entrepreneur that is. You know, I, I, when I was just head down growing it, I never even really thought of that opportunity. But as you will grow and evolve and, you know, having the family and the part, and it's just like, it does make a lot of sense to do that when the time's right. The important is journey because a lot of young people, when they, when they start a business today, all they are thinking is how they're going to celebrate that victory of selling the business or buying Lamborghini or buying a house or having that win. To me, journey is everything. Yeah. Because you've got to enjoy it if we're part of it. Because otherwise you're going to waste 15 years of your life. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like this. How much of your journey did you actually enjoy? I loved every part of it. And I think that's the thing is like, when I was at the markets, I was so just, you know, I wanted to be successful as an entrepreneur. Like I didn't start in clothing. I was starting just these stuff off eBay cameras and, and stuff and getting good at really sales, but only when my mate, but it was this thing I had to force myself and train this muscle every day to sell it, which was good because I was growing the muscle. Yeah. But when my mate showed me this video and it was basically a YouTube video of Nigel who started BAPE which is this iconic Japanese streetwear brand. And it was this video of him touring like his house and he had the first Bugatti in Japan. He had the first Phantom wrapped at camera. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's like the coolest guy on the freaking planet. I want to be like that. <laughs> and, I, and I literally, when I saw that, I got obsessed. And that's when I started the market. I was like, oh, I'm going to try and sell these shorts because there was this, arbit they were selling at surf stops for a hundred bucks. You could buy them at Walmart for 16 bucks. Literally sent my mate to Walmart packed them in the boxes, sent them over and sold them at the market and started in the clothing that way. And, but because I was so passionate about clothing, about streetwear, about, you know, everything that I learned around sales and connecting emotion to the product, I was just obsessed with it. And this is a key principle that we still enforce today. Energy management is more important than time management. I agree. And that was a key sort of driver. And so as much as it was, uh, it was hard and it was a grind. I still loved it. I was still excited. I was still like, you know, it was never like, oh, Sunday. I was, I would do my, my plan every week on a, you know, I still do it on a Sunday night where I, you know, this is my outcomes for the week. This is what's important. I would break it down. And I remember doing it. Like sometimes I couldn't go to bed on Sunday because I was so freaking excited to just make it happen. Cause once I had that clarity of the plan and this is what we got to do, this is the thing, this is the outcome. But you know what's interesting? You still freaking excited. Yeah. Just talking about it, your energy is there. Yes. How important was that energy throughout your 15 years of hustling, really? It's hugely important because... How do you manage it? How do you manage? Because as you know, yeah. one day everything is great. The next day there's a fire yeah. in your warehouse and you lose $10 million worth yeah. of stock. And you still have to wake up and keep going tomorrow. Exactly. How do you manage that really mental state and the energy to keep living and breathing when it does get slammed? I, you know, I've spent that much, you know, over a million dollars on personal development and 
I was a huge part of learning this key foundation of getting my morning routine dialed from, you know, from, you know, I've done, I've got the ice bath, you know, but boom. Sorry. Uh, sorry, that's all right. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it actually didn't break. Oh, shit. Is that in the frame though? Do we got to move it now? Yeah, but do I need to move that now? It's okay. It's just, it's just actually. Um, that's okay. This is actually good for the video. Well, it's all recorded. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Be so, you look good here. No. Um, your makeup. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, it's fallen down before, and actually, I think when my um, when I've stuck it back. Well, before. that's okay. Break it down. Where where did this happen? This, this happened at Pack Fair on the Gold Coast. How long ago? Uh, in twenty seventeen. Twenty seventeen, or was it twenty eighteen? Twenty. Yeah, twenty seventeen. End of twenty seventeen. Yeah. Well, there you go. Not many people get to have freaking Drake. Drake in the, you know, in the, in the photos. How cool is that? No, yeah. It was in your store too. Yeah, yeah. So he came in at, at Pac Fair. I'm sure that I just seen him. Wasn't he in one of your stores some time ago as well in the US? No, no, not yet. Sit there. Bang, bang. It was nah. Pacific Fair. No, that was Pacific Fair, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, see you soon, Drake. Yeah. In another venture. Well, there you go. You almost killed me. I know. Oh, Jesus. Kentucky Derby races. My presence in the spot is so abrasive. Box at the church hill downs. That's motivation. Yeah. You know, if, if um, that picture did hit me in the head, I would be demanding that $130,000 shoes as a uh, compensation. So, you, you know, you're lucky I didn't get hurt. Um, uh, so, 15 years of non stock work. You can't stop anymore. Why Why can't you stop? Why can't you just say, okay, enough. There's a beautiful ocean in front of me. I'm going fishing every day. For, for me, it comes back to like, I love that constant process of learning and growing and being like on that cutting edge of being challenged yet on top of things. Like for me, that is the, the point. And for me, I've decided like, I want to live that you know, my whole life. And this is a, a lot of thing that I always try and talk through careers and stuff of, of teams. Like so many people think so short term. I'm like, if you're under 40 and you don't smoke, you have like way more than a 50% chance of living to a hundred now. Like you're not going to, no one's going to quit at like, what are you going to quit at 60 and stare at the roof for 40 years? You know, it's like, you've got such a long time horizon into none is valuable as well so exactly yeah potential as a human and as well how what is the secret to happy life i believe it's constantly learning and reflecting and being open-minded there's always there's always those little things you can improve and keep it moving that feeling of progress in the right direction like for me that is is so important is is having that feeling of of progress and yeah i i like to say is like choosing consciously to do hard stuff and to lean into problems like that's part of like that ice ice bath every morning you still can't convince me to do that no, since yeah. it's <laughs> worth it it's a game changer i'm telling you there's and there's more, so much, there's so much science around it now that's just like, oh my God, the dopamine increase, that how much it lasts all day. And it's just the thing is that every morning at four o'clock, that alarm goes off and the thoughts come into your head, the automatic negative thoughts. No, not today. Oh, it's too cold. Oh, it's, win it's windy. Oh, it's raining. Oh, yeah, I've got this, you know, every excuse. And it's that thing of like, nah, I'm doing it. Okay. And commit and you just get in. And as much as your body wants to get you out, you control your breathing and you do it. And it's just like, but you know, I only just do two minutes. And then when you get out, it's like, oh my God. I said, it's what business is. Yes. Everything you just said, we can finish the interview with that. Everything you just said is exactly the business. Yeah. Because that fear is stopping people to 
make the first step. Yeah. You know, commitment. Yeah. Again, you know, how do you commit to jump into the bath? Well, how do you commit to start anything? Yeah. Because there's so much cold waiting yeah. for you to have to jump in. Yeah. You know, but once you jump in yeah. and you get out of it, look back yeah. to today. Yeah. You know, which is massive. Advice you would give somebody who's 20 years old who wants to be the same as today. I would say look to make the trade between entertainment for education. Like it can so easy to get swarmed in the part of like our oh, TikTok or Netflix and thing, but so much of that is if you can make that trade to like, well, what can I just learn? What can I is to make that trade for education? Like that is the key because self-education, it's not just like, you know, passively listening to something like this is like the most perfect or so many, you know, when you get around the right mentors or people or that right group, you know, you realize everything's possible. It's not like this. They're not these godlike figures. It's just like, oh my God, they're just guys that had a crack and figured it out as they are. You have to have the crack. Go for it. Exactly. And the more you can like just, I'm I'm true believer in that constant never ending learning and education and you can... You can learn your way out of a lot of stuff. Um, if anybody wants to learn more, there's a massive live in-person event and it's going to be live broadcast at end of March where we're going to spend two hours with Simon and we're going to have a live Q&A so we can actually really dig deep how it is actually to start something from nothing and build it up to where it is today and how do you actually deal with all of the challenges and how do you stay on top of your fucking game all the time. Most importantly, running any business for 15 years is not easy. Most people want to cry after 15 years and bury themselves in a room and not see any humans. After 15 years, whatever drug, drugs you are on, I love it. The <laughs> drugs is called life, love for living. Best drug you can have. And Simon, you are really, clearly crazy in the most amazing way because your energy... Hey, it's up, but up, I feel like speeding now back home. So, <laughs> so if I get any fines, I'm sending you your way. Yeah. Simon, was this a oh, dream to keep collecting no shoes? Well, actually, I think a few cars. No, yeah. Shoes. It, it's just always been so much part of Coach Kings. You know, I was that one always striving to get an actual Nike account for College Kings in the early days. So the yeah. early days, we actually parallel imported from America. So right. we were buying at retail and importing. So you couldn't, didn't have an account. Yeah, but I kept trying to push Nike in Australia to get the account because I was like, all these other companies would go broke if you didn't supply them. Look, I can buy it at retail and do it. I'm just, because I'm such a better retailer. Yes. And then I was able to finally influence them because just I think I was just annoying them so much that they uh, gave us the account and I'd been doing all the footwear buying and loved it for, you know, seeing the stories and seeing as it evolved. And then I just started as we got those special editions and allocations of the the Jordan, the retros, the the, so this, the this special and quick strikes. Cool. Yeah, years as well. Definitely in the last few, but I'd been doing it since the early day, and I'd always sort of, you know, kept a pair of sort of every special release for myself. I was always thought that was my super fund, you know. <laughs> Wasn't paying myself a wage, so like, oh, if I needed a super, that would be the thing one day. But uh, I, I did really believe in, uh, you know the power of storytelling and I've always been the biggest fan of the Nike brand, you know, cause actually just I working with the book. Oh yeah. Yeah. Shoe dog. Yeah. And I was just, I was made to read that book shoe dog and it was, it was phenomenal to actually, you know, because any business owner can actually relate to that story yeah. as well, because it's not easy to, to create something from nothing. While we talking shoes, show me your favorite pair of shoes. Um, for her about the value. Your favorite pair of shoes? I probably, I, I love everything like, so Virgil Abloh, so all these sort of off-white collab series, just because, so he was the, uh, you know, he's, he started uh, off-white, but he was this, um, you know, 
what is probably he was probably the most creative person like of our generation you know he started off white came the creative director of louis vuitton but you know and he unfortunately passed away but in that last couple of years of his life like just the phenomenal across you know from designing mercedes-benz to drapes plane to you know the ikea deal to off-white to creative director of louis vuitton and literally I'm assuming he's behind this. yeah so this was done for his foundation so after he passed uh bernard arnold like the, the lvmh yeah yeah he was like he okay was the richest guy in the world man. yeah yeah, which I've studied LVMH uh, since the time. It's like the, the most ultimate business model. But he goes, okay, these 200 pairs, we're going to donate them all to Virgil's foundation. And so that auctioned them all through Sophomies. Just off those 200 pairs of shoes raised $41 million. And his foundation, I think you said it paid about 130000 Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the uh, uh, value of this, this. These are, I don't know. Not not too crazy, I don't know, four five hundred or something. Right. Yeah, these Air Mag ones are a lot. They were from, um, you know, the ones from the Back to the Future yes. movie, and then they did those as well. Those were eBay auction for charity as well. So I'm assuming you paid another crazy amount for these too. Uh only about thirteen thousand when it came out, but it's worth a lot more now. So I, when I go home, I'm gonna feel really bad about my Sue collection. I think I only have one pair that's about thousand dollars and that was purchased by my good friend as well. And I was like, You bought me a thousand dollar pair of shoes? But now uh, I think you take things to another level. What's really interesting, Simon, is this. I walk into the lift. Seventy seven applause. And I press the button number seventy seven. Did that ever actually get to your mind that you are on the top yeah it is a it is a it is like because i've got the gym out on the balcony yeah, of course sorry amazing yeah. yeah. is incredible it's probably one of the biggest thing in the country as well yeah but it's just psychologically you know watching i actually took a photo of that 77 levels yeah 77 numbers in the lift and we all start from ground. Yeah. So nobody goes from zero yeah. to 77 in a, in a second. So you started from level yeah. zero. When I brought this, when I was viewing this penthouse, one of the things is when I went on the balcony, I looked down at Cavill, and that's where Tani and I first into schoolie slippers. I remember like, oh my God, that's our so that's we started. Started. And that's why I wanted to buy this, just so I could meditate every day. And I looked down, actually, at that spot. So right yeah. Now, you'd be a nine when we just... There's houses in the country. And, and from the top, you're looking at exactly where you fucking started. Yeah. You started right in front of your building. Yeah. And you were very young. Then. Yeah, yeah. Is now. But when you're early 20s, yeah. you're selling what? Shoes? Uh, it was schoolie slippers. So it was a schoolie's merchandise yeah. for, for the... Yeah. So what was your best day scaling, selling schoolies merchandise? Uh, well, we, I think we did about maybe 20,000, 25,000. Oh, oh, amazing. That bum bag full of cash. Have you were like, you know, God, the rich. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, um, it was definitely, you know, that rush and that feeling and, and I still remember, like, it's crazy. We still had, like, even in those early days, the DJs. And, you know, we had all that. It was sort of the, the influence of that time and creating that vibe and atmosphere to just sell it. It was just a, a hotel slipper with Gold Coast schoolies written on. Like, literally cost a dollar or 50 cents. How much was it? Selling it for? Uh, 10 bucks. Not a bit. Yeah. Much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we, they were like, you had to have them. And it and it was uh don't you think it's powerful that you literally literally started from bottom of this building and now you're on level 77 yeah there's nothing higher yeah it's yeah all higher than baby standing you are in the air yeah yeah nike literally yeah. um uh, so that journey what you have shown to people it is possible because you didn't have somebody that gave you a million dollars or 300 million dollars and say simon start yeah and that's why you know people that are close to me we admire your story because 
you hustled from selling yourself and you were not born salesman from yeah. what I have read. Yeah. You really spent time and money and energy educating Learned. yourself yeah. how to actually communicate with people and then day by day, chipping it away, I'm interviewing you here. Yeah. And I think that's so important. It's just that it was that training, that muscle that was, you know, from the markets of just getting stronger and stronger in sales. And that's, that's like how I got the Nike account is like, I literally said, I'm like, these retailers literally just take the shoe out of the box, put it on the wall and sell it. You're doing all the work. They're not doing anything. It's like me, because I've come from this market. Yeah, I've built the muscle. Hey. Yeah, I'm like, this is the easiest in the world to sell. Like, oh my God. Like, it is like, you know, footwear. It's like, it is the, and that was the thing is because I built the muscle, actually, you know, that was one of the powers. And this is, you know, one of the, the things that you, you see is, is so careful to, sometimes you can just luckily catch a wave or do it and just be careful not to think, you know, like, especially some of the guys on, you know, NFTs or thing. And it was like thinking like, oh, I'm so smart or thing when it's like, oh, it's sort of, there's a lot of luck and tailwind and just, and what's so important is that continually building that muscle and you do it through, yes, you know. Pain plus reflection equals progress from Ray Dalio. You've got to... Do you enjoy sales? Oh, uh, I love it. Yeah. Question for you. From nothing to $600 million business. Yeah, yeah. Over the last few years, did you ever go back to floor? Yeah. And sell shoe to somebody? Oh, no. I did it this week. Oh, really? Yeah, if I'm ever in there, I can't help but serve a customer. So because it's like there's someone's looking at their hats and I look around, oh, let me do it. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's still... I. But it is because still this. Within you, probably a lot of care factors. Because yeah. you have started that from absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know, that's a big part as well. Yeah, definitely. And I feel it's something too. As much as you go, you've got to always still train that muscle. Because yes. it's like if you don't use it, you lose it. And it's, I always, you know, I'm such a big one on sales because I truly believe like sales is influence. If you can't influence, it doesn't matter how. Like I'm employed, like I've got a thousand staff. I know, but if you're, it doesn't matter how smart you are, if you can't influence or land your point of view, land your idea, they just evaporate. Like you have to be able to influence and drive behavior change. You know? And then that's that by example as well. Exactly. You're starting your journey, employing first employee, then 10 and 20 yeah. and 30, you know, you have to be there as well. Yeah. On your journey, how important for us for you to be so focused? laser focused because you have, you know, stock that you have to buy, yeah. always that you have to pay, their taxes, their supers, yeah. rents, where does it stop? Yeah. Take your eye of the ball, you got. Yeah. Feel like with you, your eye was always on the ball. Yeah. And I think that's that, I, I'm, I can't remember the quote, but you know, it's like in business, only the paranoid and survive. You've always got to be, oh, what about this? What about this? Thinking of, of how you can anticipate problems and get ahead of it. And I never would like, I would never truly sort of relax, even on a holiday, even on a thing, I would check every day. I'm still checking the figures. I'm right checking the version. Yeah. Uh, but I still like, I still always do look for ways and, and like, I always keep thinking of ways that, you know, can be done better and improving. And I definitely, like, it definitely was a point of like taking that money off the table. Like I always say, I never slept better than that. Cause there was always that, oh, fuck, what about this? Oh, what about, you know? Your mind is always there, yeah. false, constantly. Yeah. And there's never that, like, even the thing is like someone, when you've got an online business, it's like, geez, you one cyber attack away from, you know? being a, a disaster that's something too in today's world when it can just be you know someone gets some p pinching scam and and you, you lose it in a hard bit well just just how much damage can be done it's just part of the the risk of it all yeah you don't risk you don't get anywhere no nah. i have to i think the biggest risk any human can take is not taking any exactly um uh, interesting and how inspiring story simon you know, you're from a little place in Australia, Mount Isa. That's where you were born. Yeah. 
population is probably less than what it is building here. <laughs> and um, uh, you work hard, you hustled, and you build phenomenal business. And you know the story itself is just inspiring that for any new generation now, they can see it is possible. You know, somebody who started from nothing and, you know, even finding one life club, that's what it's all about. You know, everything that us older guys have learned, we have to give it out there. Because yeah. we, what, when we die, if we don't pass our knowledge to others, and what a fucking waste, Sinai. What and you feel obliged because it's like, oh my God, I didn't invent this. I learned it and I applied it. And it's like, oh my God, you know, and to be able to. And it's to a job to pass it to us. A hundred percent. Yeah. And um, uh, we can't take everything we have today. But I actually do have a feeling if you did die tomorrow, you'd probably take this with you because they're, not, they're so special. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd, well, I don't know. How, do you, how do you manage? You have not one. Not two, not three. Yeah, four children, under age of seven. Beautiful wife. You're still involved in running businesses. Yeah, and you're still smiling because just thinking of all that is like, oh my god! And the beautiful noise behind me, yeah. so they've been crying. Yeah, okay. Like, Hi, little one. Yeah. Like, you're showing it that it's, it's possible to actually manage it all. Yeah. And it is the, it is the thing. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so lucky and so grateful. Like it is the thing. Whenever you're practicing that gratitude and the appreciation, nothing is easier than doing it with the kids. And it, it is, uh, it is amazing to be in the position where we could have it. And you know, I'd, I'd I keep trying to convince Tony. I'd love to have a whole football team if possible. <laughs> but you would know, I think she might yeah. be. Sweetheart, yeah, yeah. Much. that's an out for you, plenty. Uh, but uh, you know, there's always, um, but it is so great to to see them and see them grow every day. And it is that thing is is having children is like you realize how quick we can all learn and stuff. And you know, just and, and there's so much to learn yeah. from children. Yeah, and you know, being so innocent as well. Yeah, yeah. Hey, right. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. Cold hearts and heated floors, no parental guidance, I just see the boys, therapy sessions, I'm in the way.